It's a Seda Kirsten Henry G story, top versus bottom. We're going to be finding out exactly how FaZe and Optic do clash now as we are preparing ourselves for another bout here in Katowice. Day one, baby. Yanko, Natu, you're joining me to understand this one. And so far, it has been incredibly underwhelming for Optic. Bottom of the table, Yanko. Is there anyone we have to be pointing fingers at within the Optic roster? Uh, I'm not really sure. We haven't seen that many of their games on stream. The one that we saw in Inferno, it's yeah. a new map. You, you know, on one hand, you could see some good things from them. On the other hand, it seemed like they are not really practiced enough on the map. The rotations weren't really as crisp as, as you would expect. So with that being said, I have no idea, Alex. I mean, it hasn't. the results haven't been awful, Yona. I mean, yeah. you know, double digits versus Fnatic versus Astralis. They're putting up a fight, just not resulting in converting into any sort of I mean, standing. If, if you do mistakes like they did in that situation where the bomb was planted on B oh. and they thought it was planted on A, I mean, you're, you're going to lose games, right? But I, I thought actually in that Inferno game that the, the ideas they had um, from a tactical point of view were actually very valid. Like, they had some really good executes, but then may maybe their actual execution wasn't as crisp as it needed to be. Yeah, and of course, talking tactics, uh, it would be foolish not to mention the man standing behind them, Yanka. We've yet to address Peacemaker's presence amongst Optic. Yeah, he came in with Hiko uh, in the team to help Naf uh, with calling. Obviously, in Vegas, he was able to call the whole time, but uh, here he, only, he can only talk during timeouts. And I think you could see his contribution with the set executes that Yona was mentioning on Inferno, that B rap through uh, Chapel, what was construction previously, and, and things like that. But even though the, like, the general game plan is there, the execution isn't as crisp. Okay. So it's like the small things that uh, haven't been working out for them so far. Yeah, it's the small things that make a big difference too, right? I mean, you have the plan, but then once you have to actually commit to something, and uh, you know, we saw that one example of that B wraparound where a flash comes in, but then it takes ages for the first guy to even peek the corner. So it's pretty easy for the guy that was boosted up to get that first skill, and there's not even a possibility for a trade. Yeah, I presume those flaws are something that can be ironed out over time. A yeah. recurring theme on this very analyst desk: time is the healer of some of those tactical wounds. We had. We have to move on, though, to phase their opponents who are doing fantastic work so far. Immortals, Fnatic, and NIP have all fallen by the wayside of phase in Group A so far. Will they add another scalp to the collection? Yes. We'll find out. Yes, that's a stern answer. Expecting your boy Nikkei to deliver. Yeah, everyone's been delivering. I mean, Alu was uh, top fragging in that game against NIP that we didn't see uh, on the mainstream. Nico has had good rounds. I think everyone has been performing just like they need to for, for this team to, you know, play well. They, I, I'm not sure if they already secured the spot out of the groups. I think Pretty so. Sure they yeah. Yeah. I think so. But, uh, you know, they have nothing to lose from this point on. They are just keep they're getting some live practice in uh, until the playoffs start, basically. And interestingly enough, they've actually dis displayed some depth in their map pool as well. We've seen three different maps in their three different wins, Train, Overpass and Cash. Yona, the map veto is about to begin. I presume, you know, we could even get an, an another addition to that. That's depth we haven't always seen. Yeah, I mean, it is it's been simple enough. Like as in like we mentioned in one of the one of the previous shows, I think, uh, was the fact that they they the wolf back alive, which is three guys going together somewhere, taking one map area of the map, and then you'll have two individuals holding another two angles. And it's just like they've they've not got trying to be too elaborate. Instead, you just kind of utilize the fact that you have all that firepower, you make sure you just play it off each other well, and that's the way you go. I think it's going to be new core pass. Okay. I'm just saying that right now. Well, let's, I mean, <laughs> throw we, it can, out there. We, we can start those vetoes. It looks like they're already going down. Cobble, Cobble is, down. is gone alongside Mirage. Cash is gone. So, so far, so good. Uh, what, what was it again? Keep going. Yeah, you said nuke. Keep it going. Yeah, nuke, nuke is very, very pass. possible. Oh, close. Phase choosing uh, to remove Inferno. There goes nuke. Okay. We result in train, but close enough. L job lost. Yeah. Fired. If only you'd have you know, understood the stats better, Yanko, you'd probably have done a better job there. Um, train it will be then. I agree. Train is statistically a uh, city sided map, yes. although when it comes to <laughs> Tier 1 CS, when you look at teams like VP or Navi, they're capable of winning almost 67% of their T sided rounds as well. So that's, one would say, there is a sort of a counter correlation to Ooh. the Ooh, yeah. exposition of the anomaly. Wow. And of course, a, a quick reminder as well, another stat for you, 77% of statistics are made up on the spot. Prediction time, Natu. And 100% of Serbians don't know how to speak English. Let's do some predictions. I love it already. Natu, what are you saying? Train, it has to be quick. It, well, it's going to be phase winning this for sure. Um, yeah, that's the end of it. That is the end of it for you. Writing Optic out of this tournament already, Yanko? 
Phaserino. Phaserino. Right, two, two members of our analyst desk are phasing up, and we'll see if Optic can face the truth here on Train. We're going to be jumping into another game right after this. It's the prepubescent high schoolers with oversized thumbs dream. It's the optic green wall versus the phase of up. That doesn't make sense, but we are ready to roll into a classic in terms of what exists in the organizations. But in Counter-Strike, a much different tale. Optic struggling and, and as far as I can tell, theoretically and statistically out of this tournament going against FaZe, who have impressed everyone today. Yeah, looking fantastic since the addition of Nico's come in. We'll jump straight into the game. We won't uh, theorize too much here. It looks like the B-Rush coming from Optic Gaming. Why not? It normally works, but Kiyoshima, he's winning the other side, ready to get the first headshot that spots him. Decent HE grenade. Can he find the first kill? Can he find the first kill? So far, it's Kyo that's still putting aggression on Ooh, all the what? rotations back. How deep they are in the B site. Kyo still can't land it, falls back, and up the ladder, it's going to be Hiko to get him. Mixwell finding two. Nico, fresh to the phase roster. Finding an immediate frag, but now it's just Alu that remains. And Alu has a lot of work to do, all things considered. Has armor, no kit, bomb ticking as they very quickly took over the B site and got so deep within it, the rotations had no time to take place. And Optic, they'll take the first round. So I said FaZe has impressed. Optic will at least strike first in this game. Well, excuse me, just a pizza. Bit difficult to talk. Full on B rush there from Optic, managing to actually get down to lower round straight away. We talk about that being a very common and viable strategy for Terrish and was guaranteed the bomb plant there, but I thought Kiyoshima from the upper position as well. He had so much room to work with, decent grenade coming in, but you could see the bomb plant that he's spinning around in a circle and is trying to deny him that kill. It somehow works out for him. Bomb goes down and we do have a full force buy from FaZe here. Including Alu. This is normally a point of discussion, but Rain, he opens things up with the CZ, gets two as well. But he finally gets taken down by Mixwell. Taken down indeed, but Mixwell still standing tall, tries to get more from Pop Dog. He gets caught out by Kerrigan and Nico again has one on a Deagle, so it's not necessarily done. Three HP for Rush, I would say it might be done in reverse. It might be FaZe striking back yep. to take control of the game. Not really much Rush can do with this one. Three HP leaves him extremely limited. It would be down to a mistake of FaZe. If he gets his kill, maybe there's a chance. Unfortunately not, Nico. He's ready for that one, and there it is. The reason I was kind of pointing it out, it's quite common for the CDs to force by the second round, that's fine, but it's Alu who force bought into it as well. We always talk about this. Alu for FaZe, he's instrumental in their success. If he doesn't have the AWP, they don't get rolling with that weapon, that's when they can be a little bit slow to wake up, but you know what? No harm, no foul. They managed to pick up the round as well as Desert Eagles, and especially the CZ from Rain towards Poplock as well. Optic, much too fast in that round, I would say. For my liking, and anti ecos and you know the Force Buy is coming in, you want to be slowing things down and trying to get some intel first instead of running into tight choke points. They'll be Force Buy in return. They take a bit of damage here. Maybe they can return the favor with the Desert Eagles. Let's see what they can do here. Spotted. It's going to be Nauf enough to fall back. And Mixwell, maybe I'll have a go with the Desert Eagle as well. Kiyoshima, meanwhile, will hold off B on his own. Alu's inside of Z, favoring off to the B side. Three UMPs in play, AK carried over for Nico. It's Nafly that's already checked out the bottom of Pop Dog. Mixwell tagged up, is rotating around the holes above. Walking through the shower, maybe wash some of that blood off. 
As they look closer and closer onto the B site, Kiyoshima the one to wait. A lot of work for him to do, but Alu, like I mentioned, is close by, so he's got an M4, which gives him the range game. He's just got to make sure that they're efficient and don't get overwhelmed too quickly. The smokes, they're going to leave a gap, a massive gap, and it's already good enough. Nice shot from Tarek. P250 at that, but it's good enough to find two in the M4. Kyo never had to show himself. Nikos found a kill to keep him alive. Kyo does get found by Tarek, but that should be the round as he falls to 23 HP. <laughs> a little bit of a game. I'm not even sure what just happened. I thought he was in that the was, air, and then he was on the ground. That was a bit like Call of Duty. Uh, right, so actually. Yeah, so everyone's spinning around and jumping in the air like they've got jetpacks on. I haven't concept. played the new. Yeah, I haven't played the new ones. They do seem ridiculous. Yep, not a fan. But anyway, round number four comes in, and Optic can't really do too much of that. The smoke was poor towards Kinetic. You could see how much room face had to work with there. They find the first two kills. A nice shot from Tarek with the P250, but Kiyoshima getting the job done with the UMP. We go into round number four now. This has to be the full eco from Optic. Another B rush. Let's just go for it again. There's two CDs waiting for them. MP9 in the hands of Alu. He's doing damage, but he can't find a kill. He might be taken down here. There's a team kill as well. This is getting chaotic, but phase do recover. Oh, just about. It's still equal. Still equal until now. Nico, AK-47, will take down Tarek. Nico and Naf remaining. Neither of which were able to pick up any weapons, and Naf unable to pick up any further damage. It's Nico on an MP9, does just get to that weapon now, but unless he can catch off Kerrigan, completely unaware, which he can't do, there's no chance of him going any further. So Optic will be limited to the one round thus far, but they are finally in range to bring up guns again. AK-47s only. It won't have enough for the AWP. So, Matt, we didn't really get to talk about this at the start. What are your thoughts on this one? I feel like FaZe, they're looking incredibly sharp right now. Optic, with the addition of Eco as well, I didn't believe they have what it takes to actually pick this game up. I'm going to say FaZe, take this like 16-5 or something like that. 16, really? 16, You're yeah. going that hard on it? Yep. I mean, they did win on train earlier. Yeah, I, I'm really cool. I think the addition of Nico, it looks sick right now. It's kind of revitalized everyone. He seems revitalized himself. Again, we mentioned no obligations within game leading, even though Dennis was doing a bit of that before. His time ended in mouse sports, but he also doesn't get frustrated by simple mistakes or the fact that he has to perform himself. He knows there's a bit of leeway here with the amount of skill that this lineup possesses. Speaking of Nico, in toward A main. Yeah, well, they've lost that first frag, so Nico trying to do what he can against Hiko. Don't get confused, as this challenge could be coming in momentarily. Nico not committing just yet, but here it comes. This frag is crucial, and we instrumentally do the success of Optic Gaming as they pick it up. That's going to be a five on three now in favor of Optic. Kerrigan will try and push up to where Nico went down. But a good play from Optic to stay passive. Yeah, they're waiting. Very disciplined. Waiting for that reaction to come in. It's perfect so far. Nico as well as the one that's under siege thus far since joining Optic as well. Very, very poor statistics. In Vegas, I think one of his worst tournaments to date. Up goes out. He gets the jump on Kerrigan as a result. And then earlier in their game, which was back and forth, came under quite a bit of threat. I think that was the one that was on Inferno, if I'm not mistaken. So I saw a few threads. He's experienced. He won't let it bother him. But it is something to note that he hasn't exactly gelled in perfectly with Optic as of yet. Well, these things do take time. But no, you're absolutely right. He. Suddenly has dropped off. I think the guy's saying on the desk is worst performance to date at uh, Vegas. But uh, this is a four on two. Doesn't look like FaZe will be going for the win here. But if he can find any kills as uh, Optica retreating, that could be beneficial. Alu keeping his AWP, of course, as well. We did say that's a very important part of FaZe's game. He actually played very well against NIP earlier. NIP, we just need to point out that again. They're looking like they are done for. This is it for them. Zero and three. Um, I'm not sure what they're playing next, but uh, pretty much out of the tournament at this stage. Yeah, it's, 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 they'd have to win out. Obviously, four teams from the six-team group go through. Two of them get a buy. I think that's correct. Is that correct? I think it would be three teams, excuse me, go through, and one of them gets a buy into the semis. Yeah, that two of them play the quarters. Sorry, not four teams. That makes no sense at all. So that's how that all goes down but either way it's yeah it's been an underwhelming affair for NIP three tournaments in a row now and not including the major because it was the first of which the qualifier that was not the reason they were there that's a shot from Nico can't quite land it just barely missed it has to fall back 46 HP Molotov to go up toward the top of the ramp keep himself in contention but considers the repeak and Mixwell's ready for it so the AK wins out on the duel and Optic having just picked up the first gun round have the first kill in the one immediately after
Absolutely, Nico, very aggressive there, the AWP. You normally see players towards the bottom of the lower ramp, and obviously they won't be wasting any time here. It's after Kiyoshima to try and defend. He pushes through the smoke. Can he get anything done? Stuck in it for now, hoping he can find the perfect timing here, but he can't. Hiko sprays him down. Five on three. That should be the round concluded, but FaZe still trying to see what they can find here. Oh. It's going to be Rush that actually takes out Rain. Decent position to be in. Alu limited. No angle of opportunity. They had him completely covered off from upper. And it's Optic with two in a row. And impressive fashion, I have to say, as well. Nico going down early both times. He died in A main in the first gun round. He died by missing a shot on the op and a re peek in the second. Can't necessarily fault him for the aggression, but yeah. it is something to note that Optic's been able to find the first kill that's been untradeable in both occasions. Yeah, that was kind of Fallen style. He's one of the few players at AWP that goes that aggressive in the inside area of train, but can't land the shot, falls back, goes for the second reface, and he's punished for it. Kiyoshima left in a horrible position at that point. Round number seven should be a full eco and not really much to report. It's not getting excited, but Carrigan does find a couple of kills here. Alu chiming in as well. It's a little bit... Hectic there for Optic, but overall, a relatively successful round. They have to take the lead here as well. So 4 3 now in favor of Optic. But the orb coming back out for Alu. A buy comes in. Nico just down to UMP, but he is actually tremendous with that weapon. So don't hold that against him as we're going to run a break. These rounds have been super quick here, Matt. No one's really done in the deep point so far. There's been lots of rushes, lots of fast plays towards outside, and uh, we'll see if that trend continues here. Bomb scooped by Hiko and thrown further into the corner as Tarek will drop down at Pop Dog. He'll have made noise doing so, which should signal to Rain on the outside of the boxes that he's there as such smoke called in from his teammate. I think Kerrigan was the one to place it. Either way, take that back. Kerrigan still has the smoke, so it was Alu that placed it, but either way, it's down toward Ivy. The approach comes in. Rush, great opening shot again. It's Nico they find. Becomes a bit of a worrisome tale. We just talked mm. about how well he's played on the start of this team. His, his start with this team. But he's going to have to be a little bit more careful in this particular game. Mixwell, oh. limited inside of the smoke, manages to swap to the pistol fast enough. And it's Kerrigan to go down. It's a two-man advantage again for Optic to work with. Absolutely. They're actually looking pretty on point right now. They've got a minute to work with as well. But Rain finds two from absolutely nowhere. Mixwell gets the kill and return towards Alu, but still the advantage lies of Optic. Rain smoked off this time after finding those two kills. Tries to cover off the entrance from Ivy. And Keo realizes, hang on, I'm already through the smoke, I'm alive. Decides, I'm gonna go all the way. Bomb goes down, he can't find the planter, so it leaves the advantage in terms of manpower with Optic, but they're severely limited on HP. And Mixwell has an AWP, that's gone. He can't peek out late to try and get the one-hit wonder on the bomb. He'll have to do better than that as Kiyoshima will take down Hiko. This starts to bode very well. Rush the last alive, and it's Rain on 75. He's already on the defuse. Two seconds. Molotov's going to be late. Rain's going to hold it, but Rush hits the shot. One second remaining. Rain had done such a good job in that round as well. He found three kills. It was a five on three. Rain from the back tracks finds two kills towards Pop Dot. This is exactly it right now. Beautiful stuff from him, and it actually comes down to the 1v1. The full defuse map, 10 HP on the remaining terrorist player as well. He was going for the Molotov, hoping as a fake defuse. His teammates had told him otherwise, you need to go and try and deny that defuse, and manages to pull it off. And look at what an influential round that is as well. Another eco for phase 5 3 in favor of Optic. They need to be careful though, they keep giving these kills away at the start of the round. This player had like a full anti eco play passively at the start. They did it before towards Pop Dog, and now it's still a fine situation, but definitely. In reach of phase. I had a feeling. Keo smartly doesn't take the battle in full effect. Misses the headshot as well on Naf. Allows Hiko to come in, find a kill on Kerrigan. So in a reverse of what we started to say, Hiko looking a little bit more on form. Has four kills. Four and four, but he's not an entry fragger by any means. And it's Nico that's been given up quite a few times early, despite that he does have six frags in the game. Looking for a seventh, and he'll find it. Of course he will, on a yep. Deagle. They might fancy this one. They haven't got a kid, but that, okay, that should decide at this point. Mixwell and Nap chiming in for frags there, just Alu remaining, coming in from Brown Halls with the P250. Trying to pick up a weapon. No real reason to save that. This was an eco for phase. As we go into round number 10 here, it's going to be Optic with the lead for now. Mixwell, meanwhile, stays on the AWP. It's one of three because there's two Kerrigan and Alu. Well, who does manage to bring up the armor as well. But out of the sight, how aggressive does Optic want to go this time? And more importantly, how aggressive does Nico go? He's got seven kills as we look at it. 
to give up the first kill on three consecutive rounds. Rain goes pop dog. He'll keep it toward it. Finds one. That's going to start off well, but it's traded by Rush. Drops down immediately. Nico smokes off both sides. One was thrown to his right at Sandwich. He covers off Bomb. Gives him a bit of room. He's going to play on top of the train as well, which may catch them if they push for the fast default plan. Better still, spots mix well. Now Rush is in the open, but he's lost track of him. Leaves him open, and Nico finds the response kill. Fast play from Kerrigan. And he tried his best, Nico, to deny the plant, but now that it's down, Hiko could try and clutch this back. One versus three, playing from hell, and Kerrigan's found him. It's the round over. Well, finally, after five rounds in a row there for Optic Gaming, FaZe managed to hold off the full execution towards its outside area. It comes down to Kerrigan, picking up that secondary orb as well, managing to find two kills with that weapon. That's one of the first full executions we've seen as well, coming from Optic. They're actually relying on those early frags, mistakes being made by FaZe, and at this point, it's going to be shut down. FaZe now... Two orbs in hand. We'll see that buy coming from Mixwell once again. He's still got the AWP. I don't want to see a much slower paced game from Optic now. We've had the fast stuff that has worked for them in the past, but let's try and open up these first picks and see how round number 11 goes down for them. It's actually been quite interesting. I'd assume that FaZe were going to run away in this game. I even predicted the 16-5 the or something like that map, but Optic actually have the lead for now. So here you go. I actually agree with that. I'm, I'm surprised with how well they've been able to take these gun rounds with convincing fashion. But Hiko going off toward this brown hall position early has forced Kiyoshima back with just a wee bit of utility thrown toward the corner. Halu on the op, though, is going to try and hold this as they walk in. Can't decide which target to fire at. Looked at the legs and then saw the jumping body. Fires between them. That means Kiyoshima has to play for the Taz angle. Can't quite land it. One for one. And all but done because Bomb is going to go down and it's Hiko to push forward. Another round for FaZe where they're in desperate array. They've got to try and push up and immediately Hiko strikes. They've got one kid. It's on Kerrigan, but that's gone now as well. It's all to Nico. One versus two. He's done well with the AWP to find opening kills, but he can't get over the top. He's still got room to work with, but can't land the no scope. That would have been impressive. We've been calling out Hiko the last few games, and that was actually textbook stuff from him. The inside execution, nice and fast once again from Optic. The smokes go down, they get the initial kill, and this is what you want to be doing as a terrorist. As soon as that bomb's down, you're getting down there, you're stopping the rotations as well. He starts nailing shots. A bit of vintage Hiko coming into fruition there. It's really nice to see that happening, and we'll see whether FaZe can do anything with these pistols. Once again, I said it before, Optic probably want to start slowing down here. The FaZe guys are very good at the pistols here. They are going to be fully committing. and could be running into the Lions then once again, but Naf, he nails that first kill and takes down Ray. Starts off well as Optic find three. Keo tries to open it back up with the Deagle, but that's not going to happen. And Kerrigan at this point, I was going to say, if he could find Terra and can get the AWP, they would hunt him down inevitably, but it would be something to work for. But 8-4 for Optic, T-side. Not bad at all. This is still one of the most CT bias maps we have in the game right now. Um, Nuke was up there, but obviously uh, since the Major, that balanced out. That's kind of almost a 50-50 affair now. I'd say this is right up there. Optic, certainly the underdogs right now, actually looking very promising as we go into round number 13. And a double orb set up once again for FaZe. Can they hold off the similar sort of approach from Optic here as well? Mixwell and Tarek with the AWPs, and Mixwell takes off the head of Carrigan. Nice response from Rain. Four ops. Now down to just two remaining. As it went one for one at the start, Rain finding another opportunity to try and get damage into AMA, but can't land it. And Naf's going to drop down smoked off, but at least gets himself in position early enough. And if Rain stays up on top of that train without knowing, he's going to be in a bit of a problem, especially if he tried to fade off toward Rush, who gets down. I take that back. It looked like he was inside of the alley at Sandwich. He's actually, the X-ray is misleading. He's actually out toward Ivy. Or Vines, as Chad says. Vines. Got Vines, Side Alley, Ivy, we've got all the names. But I go with, we'll go with Ivy. You can't just take every name Chad gives it and adopt it, Matt. No, you definitely can't. <laughs> you, you seem to be doing that with some of the places on this game. You know, just diggity. Okay. Nico spots the jump across, wasn't quite ready for it. They've picked up that second op and brought it back into place. Gonna get Molotov off. Once, oh, that's a problem. Wants to hit the <laughs> shot. Not only does he get Molotov, he headbutts Zinedine Zidane style a grenade that puts him on one HP and then a further tick, he's gone. Alu. Has to hold the line from control. I take it back, he's on the bomb train. It was a misleading angle. It looked like he was much more higher than that. But it still works out because it's just now to work with one versus three. And he has the bomb. He's got 27 seconds. But he doesn't have position because Kiyoshima was waiting for it the whole time. Well, a recovery at least 
from phase there. Looked like Optic could have run away with the round once again. Key players dropping towards that Ivy position. Good Molotov usage from Optic as well. They can't pick up the round, but phase that's an expensive one for them. They do manage to recover the AWPs. Alu especially. We want to see him maybe throw in something a little bit more aggressive this time. We have seen him try to commit towards that upper ramp position, and that's where he's going. So there it is. That's perfect. If the CT can actually get control of that position, he can lock them down and have one player towards the other position while his teammates hold towards outer. So Kyoshi will be there for the rush. And once Alu gets set up, he can't actually do it. The fact that Molotov dropped there, he actually has to fall back now. So that's actually a really good utility usage from the team. They've got control of Brown Halls and the first kill once again. Rush. To try and get into a Brown Hall support Naf's position. He has switched to just Naf. Remember, it was Naf Fly. Commemoration to a teammate that passed in previous years. It's Keo that's going to try and get a better angle, but as he does shift to watch upper, puts himself vulnerable to lower, and Nico's not able to do anything of it. Gets needed again. Nico single handedly taking him down time and time again. It's rain to pick up one, but Rush pushing forward as Nico did it on the Kerrigan. Optics looking much to form on train, I have to say. Yeah, they are looking very, very good indeed. This is a map we know they can play, though. If you remember back to Pro League, especially, they battered Liquid on this map and uh, they looked around it. That was actually when Hiko was playing on the opposite side, which is True. interesting enough. But they did look very good on this map. I don't get to cast them enough, actually, on this one. And they can play the T side very well, it seems. As Kerrigan, he finds two, but Rush will be the one to take him down there. It's going to be nine to five in favor of Optic. I think we have to have a pause here. Tactical pause, okay. And it's actually from Optic, you know. You'd assume it'd be from phase at this point, considering the situation. But it's giving Optic just a chance to make sure they guarantee it here. There's Peacemaker behind them, just kind of talking things over, making sure they don't make any mistakes here. A few mistakes happening at the start of these rounds, like rushing towards Pop Dog, rushing outside, losing that first kill. If you're anti eco, the idea is that the mentality should be every kill that we lose, there's someone there in return to trade the frag. That should be the mentality. We know how powerful the pistols are in CSGO. Use your utility, flush out the key areas, work together. It should be very rare that you're calling for a full outside rush to, towards choke points that are very ch very tight and where CZs can be waiting for you, or five sevens for that matter. But Optic looking very promising here to get to round number 10 on the T side of train. It's been a rough tournament so far. But this could be it. Phase now, UMP, CZs, Desert Eagles. Not looking too great. So 9-5 for Optic. I still think it means statistically they're out of the tournament because they're 0-3. This would make them 1-3 and Phase is that far ahead. I think you need four losses to go out. I think you'd only need three if three go really? through. Yeah. Well, you'd, you'd either be three and two or two and three. Okay. Hence the tiebreak scenario. If someone was two and two, we would need that game today. I think is how it would work. It's been a while. When I played hockey, I understood how these robin round robin things worked. But uh, I'm no longer athletic, and I don't Notice. do math. Oh, did you? Yeah. Appreciate that. I've been at the gym twice in, in two days. That's a record you know. for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> twice in the year. It's fine. Anyway, CZ, UMPs, Desert Eagles. Not really much to work with in a phase. But uh, Optic are aware they've heard the CZs peppering away outside, so they'll be slowing things right down. Execution at this point would be great. I think they are setting up for that. That's a good call. Treat us like a gun round. The smokes can go in. They're lining them up right now. Nico's watching the flanks just in case. Has to take his concentration away a little bit there. Nico, he has to play in front of these smokes. He knows it. He's the only one with a weapon here. Gets in towards Pop Dog and actually has to commit. And it's a fake. So he could actually do something really cool with this. If he put time to perfection, which he cannot, he could have actually been the thorn in their side. Alu's waiting below and not yet spotted, hoping he'll go overlooked, but it should be someone peering down from above. Nice response from Keo. We still got a chance in this. If that kill had come through, I would have written it all done, but they pulled it back around Hiko. Able to take down Rain from afar, leaving Keo and Kerrigan 14 and 48. And the bomb planted a lovely shot from Keo. It's Hiko that has to do something of it. Here we go. Low HP as well for Kiyoshima. That's going to be easy enough. Unfortunately, Kerrigan's not able to ground, gain much ground in the time by which Hiko found the first frag. This changes things, though, because Hiko wants to go toward the high ground, still has the armor to work with. Kerrigan has no kit, and he's hunting desperately with the Deagle to try and find the opening. At this point, he must consider the fact that Hiko's above. Okay. He's picked up a kit. Smoke as well. He's on it. Hiko's got to try and pick this out perfectly. Two seconds. He's done it as well. No way. Kerrigan finds the only kit and smoke down on the site, and Hiko can't find him inside of it. 
though Laihiko was returning some real form in this half. Did a lot of good work there, but Carrigan, that's pretty much all he can do. Finds the kit, drops the smoke on the bomb as well, just before he defuses, the flashbangs go up in the air as well. It's a really exciting half so far, but I don't think it's done quite yet. Baze can certainly come back from this. We'll take a quick break, do not go anywhere. Come back with Trey. Well, to our surprise, even with Nico's addition, FaZe can't go up high enough to climb over a seemingly endless green wall in the first half. 9-6. Optic looked very impressive, having won the pistol, lost the ensuing eco round, and then swarmed back to life and took a very commanding control of the lead. I think, as well, you have to mention, FaZe was a little bit over-aggressive, and Optic played it quite well. Yeah, yeah, they adapted quite nicely there. And uh, to be fair, that should have been 10-5. Like, Nico played that round so well, but Carrigan, oh, Credit where credit is due, managed to somehow pick it up with the full defuse in the smoke there. We go into round number one, and Naf kicks it off with a lovely USB headshot. Make it two. Can he find three? He can't. He overcommits. And Mixwell, he helps him out and gets him out of dodge there. It's going to be a five on two just like that. Well, Naf with two HP he gets two kills and the assist. That's more than enough in that situation. Nico trying to do anything he can on top of the site. It looks to be another pistol for Optic, unless Alu can pull off an ace. Necessarily someone that I attribute to pistol skills, but it's often situational as such as this case because three of them are very low on HP. Problem is he doesn't have the bomb. He's got that back towards spawn. If he can get there before they realize, and certainly they can't push, he could actually make this work because he's going to have to force them into gunfights. I don't think he can win the round, but you have to think he's the AWP, right? Every kill he gets with this Glock is another $300 in the bag, so that's fine. So having three low HP players, he needs to make sure he plays. He doesn't just give up and think, okay, there's no way I can win this. He probably won't get a plan down, but if he gets two more kills out of this, that's actually pretty promising for his bankroll going forward as the main AWP for FaZe Clan. So let's see what he can do here. 40 seconds remaining. Doesn't have to rush. Just get some intel. He can even change his position after finding something towards main entrance here. Doesn't quite spot Mixwell. As he gets on top of Pallet, checks the off angles to be sure. It's pistols, it's late. They could have gotten themselves anywhere. This time he will. That's free. Mixwell down. Naf's a single shot, rushes as well. Hiko is the harder challenge, the final boss perhaps, and he plays inside of control room. That means he may even be the next to spot. Oh, Alu, over top of the bomb train. He's gonna overcommit to this bomb, down he goes. No way to win the round at this oh. point. Hiko kills his teammate. <laughs> I was wondering what just happened. Kills his low HP teammate. I'm sure they'll get a chuckle from that, but it is going to be the round done. 
This was beautiful from Nafta. That one bullet opened thing up. So spicy. And he takes two down as well. I'd say he just slightly overcommits to this one, but when you've hit those two kind of shots, you want to keep going. His teammate bails him out. And Alu, he doesn't get the plan down, but he gets a couple of kills out of it, right? So that's $600 in total. That's actually a really big deal as an AWPer as well. He doesn't force by in the second round like he did in the first. To be fair, they won that round, so I can't really hold that against him. And uh, here we go then. It's going to be number 17. The force by comes in from the tees. Pretty standard stuff, considering they didn't get that bomb down. But they're so deadly with these pistols. That's always been the headline with this phase team. So many superstar aimers within them. It's just been the, the correlation of the team and the setup that uh, hasn't really impressed us too much. Smoke and Ivy temporarily hold things off. Eagle shot from Rain. It lands as well. Hits Rush. It's tantalizingly close to the first two. That one's nice. Hits Mixwell. Is he on an option of two targets? He'll take either. Thank you very much. Oh. The third lane is looking lovely and impressive. I have to say, uh, the first one was telegraphed. The second one was pretty, and the third was just beautiful. Oh, they've done it again. FaZe actually steal the second round away, and you do say lovely. I was, I was talking to the producer, oh. but yes, <laughs> I do say it a lot. I have to stop. Things are not lovely. They're uh, spiteful and hatred, and I need to get uh, into that's that. That's what I like you when you're darker. That, that's what you should keep doing. Get on that sort of Seems path. racist. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> I meant, you know what I meant. I know what you mean. I'm sorry. Bro, whatever, whatever tangent we just went on then, it's going to be Optic giving away the second round once more, and five sevens of Desert Eagles, and a flashbang. But one flashbang sometimes is enough to get you a couple of kills here. Rush, looking to find something towards Ivy. There it is. Edgel comes in, but for a second, but Kiyoshima takes him down. That fly this time with the Deagle has to respond to Rain's challenge last time. Looks oh. at the exact moment they enter in from Ivy. They were below him at Sandwich, so he was looking for the option, but couldn't quite find the angle that was favorable. Kiyoshima makes it a little bit closer. So that Deagle round from Rain is impressive for so many reasons because it happens at exactly the right time in the half as well to give them a chance immediately to take momentum and bring this close because Optic winning two pistols and eventually getting Ecoed. Here's the team kill, by the way, from Eco. <laughs> just, yeah, just, the fast just barely. Yeah, he, he, did, he didn't mean it. That is going to be phase pulling one back for Eco for Optic. Round number 19. So many opportunities for Optic, so many close rounds, and you feel like they've been the better team overall so far. That's... This tight situation is just slipping away from them. It's going to be pretty simple procedure here. Alu, in his usual pallet position, will just be scouting out for this first headshot with the AK-47. Nothing really given away. You can see the TT actually stacking towards inside predominantly. Four players in that part of the map. Nafta holding connector as well. Might as well go for a stack. Got nothing to work with here. No PT-50s, default pistols across the board. No grenades. Hold it to the B stack. Hope for the best. Now it's not in connect, I beg your pardon. He's actually up in towards heaven, so we'll see whether he can make anything happen here. Spots one. An easy shot to Alu, but pistol versus AK that range. Nothing comes easily as such. And Alu is able to take the shot, take him down. 64 HP remains for him and the bomb planted. Rotation's coming in through CT. Already spotted him, Kerrigan. Actually does. Get taken out by Tarek. It looked like he should just be able to tap in, but he couldn't find the headshots. They actually don't take any damage at all from Carrion. So Alu now has to wrap back around, and it's Rush to hit the next headshot. This is a game of pistols thus far in the half. Either way, I don't think there's enough in it for them to be able to pick up the round. They do pick up, though, two guns. Make that one. one. Yes. Well, that would have been good if they could save the Famas as well, but not meant to be. Tarek should be able to save his weapon, though. Rush, he knows what that weapon is, so he's going to see whether he can just... Outlast the bomb radius, there it is. And let's see if he can hand down that weapon. He certainly does. So a round that they invested zero dollars, they managed to get an AK-47 and a Famas in return as well. So that's not too bad whatsoever. They still have the lead for now, but oh, I'd say phase. That I, for me, they're going to have the edge on the T side. That's where they're really going to come to life. Faster tactics, letting Nico off the leash a little bit, just running around, blowing everyone's head off the AKs. And I think Optic really had to take advantage and those tight clutch situations as well. Really unlucky in both second rounds they managed to drop, but uh, what can you really do in phase? And they're hitting Deagle headshots all over the place. Rain waits. Tarek's gonna push. 
Contrasting approaches from the CT and T side, and the CT is getting control of A main. You can leave Tarek there, but they've got three toward Ivy with Nico, Alu, and Kerrigan that look to push on to solo Naf. Rush very far removed as he wants to support Tarek. Means Naf's got a large, large responsibility of holding off that position on the map. We'll see if it'll work in his favor as they send Alu back down toward T spawn, having secured at least somewhat a comfortable position at the entrance point to long. Phase for now. Showing presence towards Ivan. So we can get a Nico as well. Nico, of course, going to be the point man in this situation. See if he can find a kill as his teammates set up towards inside as well. It's all a little bit of a ruse here. I would speculate they'll try and go towards CT spawn here. Or maybe it's a full outside execution. We'll see what they decide to go with. The smokes could suggest either. But here comes Nico and Carrigan. If they go out to the left-hand side of Ivy, I think that could be the case here. Yeah, they will go CT spawn. This is a really cool strategy if it works. Nico can't land. He's quieted down considerably, but it's Rain that's been the hot hand. He's up to 16 as he finds Mixwell. Nico will get him in back. Double that up. Takes down Kiyoshima. Oh, no. Continues to add to his total his rush that leads the way by the way. But look at Alu go, only one rush. Speak up, walks in. He go over the top, finds two more, and Optic Gaming will find their 11th round. He goes back, baby. Four kills in total. Really impressive ones as well. They, for some reason, didn't consider upper ramp to be a possibility there. They hadn't checked it, and you could see no one checking this position whatsoever. They've got a bomb planter there, and Kiyoshima just doesn't seem to think that's a possibility. That's kind of strange, to be fair, but... Uh, he will take that all day long, and two nice shots to finish off the round, get the 4K as well. 11-9, and now I think we must have a tactical pause. We do indeed, for the FaZe Clan. So, Hiko, been to very poor form recently, but uh, that was promising, I have to say. There is enough money for FaZe to buy into round number 21 here. AWP for Alu. Three AKs. Carrigan presumably going to be buying the fourth. There it is. And we get ourselves a very close game indeed, Matt. So my prediction if you want to call it that, 16-6 or whatever it was. That's been blown out of the water. Yeah, he did well with that one. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I still have the best prediction of the year with the 16-14 call at Pro League. Yeah, I'm sure everyone will remember I'll, that. I'll they will. I, I will constantly remind yeah. them. <laughs> that online <laughs> game you predicted. They will have no choice yep. but to remember for years. Alu, fast and through A main, beats the Molotovs and smokes, therefore puts himself in a position to walk down toward hell. Doing exactly that. Mixwell, perfectly positioned to be fully blinded. Perhaps Im imperfectly positioned, spray through, tags up. There we get on to 58. He'll hold from the green dumpster. That ladder's getting tantalizing for Mixwell. They're not going to expect that anyone's gotten in through a main. They'll full vision of it. Alu finds it. Mixwell goes up. That's exactly the shot he was waiting for. Good damage into Tarek, but it doesn't take him down. Flashes out Naf, very fast peak, very nifty little flash as well to put himself back in position, but Alu's still wreaking havoc. Thumb sandwich, and he's got Naf down as well. It's Tarek, low HP, 23 tags by the man we mentioned, the aforementioned Alu. And it means that he goes down quite quickly to the AK of Kiyoshima. Hiko, one versus three. He can do it. If there was a man on server to be presented with a clutch situation, this would be it. But given his position away now, and they'll be smoking him out. To drop an incendiary. Oh, two low HP players here, but I just don't think there's a chance considering the money. I don't think it's such a great position for Optic. There, yeah, you can see on your screen right now, it's very low indeed. He has to save his AK, maybe upgrade it to an orb, but there's something around here. We'll have a look. But uh, as he retreats, that's Alu though, Matt. What a round that was. Can we please get that on replay? Those close range shots. That's why he's so good for FaZe. As soon as he came into this lineup, I thought, okay, now this team has some legs to it. And then if Carrigan comes in, think, okay, now it's getting really interesting. Now we've got Nico. This team could actually really cause some damage in Europe going forward. Yeah, they've got all the right ingredients, finally. They're not just five fraggers running around. Fast shot. Was that was sick. very, very nice. Oh. I, I, yeah, mid-range, I, I, more, more or less, but I mean, still very impressive. They're not just five guys running around, trying to just do as much damage. And it's, it's, to me, the whole... G2, Phase, Kingwin. It's always seemed like a survival project for some of the players in it who didn't really have anywhere else to go. Nash, of course, he may actually find a kill. Kerrigan goes down. But now it's looking like a real, real team, and I have to say I'm excited for it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's just remind ourselves, this is the first tournament 
with Nico being there. Could be a little bit of a honeymoon period. We've known this to happen in these sort of lineups before. You come to the first tournament, everyone's fired up, and then as soon, like the group stages has always been great for like these teams, but as soon as you get to playoffs, that's when things start to go a little bit wrong. But let's get back into the action, because this is actually getting really interesting. Nathfly, with his second kill with that P250, brings it down to a three on three. They've managed to obtain an AK-47 as well, but Hiko, can he do anything about this? Bomb Clan comes in towards that inside. I would speculate possibly not. He might want to see whether his teammates can back him up. He needs to find a kill very quickly indeed to make a chance of this. Hiko wants an angle favorable. In waiting to find one, he's allowed a little bit of advancement from Rain, but he's found inside of the smoke on the sidewalk. And Mixwell up close with the flash down is able to take out Nico. He got Hiko beforehand. The end greater than the H, but it's Kiyoshima. And the Molotov down early in the bomb that may have done enough. Kit for Mixwell, but he's got to get into in. it soon. No armor, ticks are too soon. Oh, has he got it right? He may have it perfect, but Kiyo slipped down undetected, and his best efforts are gone. Mixwell, I think, would have had that for time's sake. Yeah, he would, definitely. And Nathfly, he's got to be gutted at that round. He finds four kills in total. I think three of them were PT-50s as well. Very impressive stuff from him, but FaZe managed to hold on just about. That ties things up at 11-11. So, round number 23. I think there's a tough decision to be made here. We've saved an AK, so Nafly, everything in the pause, he can drop over weapon here, so they will be buying into it. Famous for one player, that's Tarek. No AWP available. Eco down to the UMP, so this is a really difficult round for Optic. Money's not in a great situation for FaZe either. That's another 1v1 it comes down to. Lots of clutches in this game so far. It's been absolutely absurd, but I love it all the same as we go into this one. Inside execution by the looks of things, FaZe will be committing at the start of the round. Smoke towards connector. In between tracks as well. Flash in. Molotov the bomb train. Hopefully find the first kill. Rain's been great so far. Let's see whether he just wants to walk in and actually find his headshot. Oh. Go down below. Manages one, speaking up, but it's phase immediately after. So 11-11. Two of our three games thus far, Henry hit that score line. Always does. Do you know what happens to 11 -11? It's supposed to make a wish. Touch something red, make a wish, yes. Red? Yeah. You never told me that part of it. I did tell you that part I've been of it. I've been making lots. all these wishes and I've never touched anything red. Well, get wrecked. <laughs> Naf, meanwhile, sitting above where we saw Higo try and play from last time, is going to have even less opportunity to find the kills and money as it is. They're going to back out of this. Their man down. So, one kit, two kits actually. Terex picked one up, but no chance. So, it will be phased, taking a late lead despite Optic having a 9 6 halftime. They've only picked up a pistol and one gun thus far. Solid round for FaZe overall. Only dropping one kill there, so tactical pause coming into the next round. Not really much he could do there. I was expecting it to be the full execution there, but sometimes these contact plays can be very effective, especially when you know the money's low with the CTs. Surprise them. They haven't got any actual vision of the upper halls at all, and you know it's going to be very unlikely to have the AWP. You can justify that. As long as the timing's going in your favor, two towards upper, if that bird's eye view of the bomb side as well, especially players like Rain, who seem to be incredibly on point right now. I think he has 17 frags. Is he actually top fragging? He is indeed. He's been great for FaZe so far. And yeah, walking to the bomb site, can't see these by surprise, and they've taken the lead. 12-11, tactical pause, Peacemaker. Giving the troops a bit of a speech there, working out how they're going to get back into this. It's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride. They did save three weapons, though, so they can certainly buy into the round. Just don't have the option of the AWP. Same story, though, for FaZe. Their money hardly stable. So 12-11. And you mentioned the money hardly stable. But the buy being as aggressive as it possibly can. All rifles, no FAMASes. They want to play a range game. I, I don't disagree with that on terrain. I think there's enough open angles that you still have to cover off. A site, you've got multiple angles you've got to cover. Whether you play Ivy or not, you still have to consider A main, which is quite a distance away. B is a very open position. It is, it is a large map in that sense. I, th I would say that Dust too long is the most clear linear corridor, but train would be the most open expansive map that you have to cover angles from. Ooh. Shot deal. Better shot fit from Naf. He doubles that up as well, takes down rain and the bomb and a third. Nico's gone. Great stance from Optic, specifically from the Canadian Naf, because he's just won them the round. A fourth kill as well. Second time he's had four kills in rounds. I think it was two rounds ago he had four as well when it came to that close defuse where Keo slipped back in, but that means 12-12 after the timeout. This is pretty nutty, but you have to say, Matt, they are going one by one. They're yeah, they not are. using grenades. And for a top player, that's like as easy as it gets. It was, don't get me wrong, very impressive, but phase, you can see with the new addition of Nico, maybe not every all the holes have been plugged just yet because that's not how you should be getting out of Ivy. 
Like, you at least want to be flashing once or smoking one area and not running out one by one. Those refracts need to be coming in, like, straight away. That almost looked like the replay without X-Ray. That's quite good from Keo. It almost looked like one of those... I, th I forget which one. It's not aim bots, but there's another bots map which yeah, randomly spawns the, uh, the bots through this teleporter one at a time. It almost looked like that, the way they were just popping out in a perfect rhythm. Okay, then. Well... It's going to be phase to open things up here. It's specifically Kiyoshima to find the first headshot. He takes down Hiko. They've got themselves a five on four here, but Mixwell aggressive, of course, towards inside. He does get a dink and finishes off Kiyo as well. Neutralizes things to a four on four, but Rain is lurking. He's coming back to avenge his teammate there, but can't find anything for it. Mixwell will be falling back at this point. This is such a huge round. The economy is just in disarray for both teams. No one can get away and find an advantage here. This keeps getting tied up time and time again. But it looks like we'll be ending up towards Inner this time. With one player towards Ivy, that's Carrigan. He normally does this for his team, trying to sell something towards this side of the map. If you can find one kill, maybe it's enough to do it. Oh, missed shots. One. He does get one. Missed shots from Naf, though, allows that to be a possibility. It now remains three versus three. Rotation's coming around, and Alley already planting. We'll try and spray through the wooden wickets that... Cover off the windows above the ramp. Nade down the lane. Howler's got to be careful. That nade getting very close, but they managed to pull it back. Tarek, he'll hit the shot on Rain and now charge toward the bomb. Never mind being quiet. They've given position away. He's going to sneak behind the smoke where he can and try and change the angle. But the smoke's going to dissolve, and Alu's got to be very careful, and he does get the jump. I thought Tarek had it. One versus two. Mixwell again. They try and clutch his back. Three HP. I'd say round done, and Alu confirms it. We said a massive round for either side there, but it's going to be phased to take it after one round victory previously for Optic. That sent them into a pretty much reset situation there. Carrigan by himself towards Ivy. We said he had to get one kill. Wasn't the prettiest of kills. Like you said, misses coming in from the CT side. Very tense right now. But phase, he gets it. They managed to get towards inside. The trades come in. And now 13-12 and pretty much full eco for Optic here. Deagles, P250s, that's about it. Smoke towards Alta. That early frag. It's Nico. So good in these scenarios. Looking for his second kill as well. Gets all three. Beautiful stuff from Nico. So good. So crisp. Yeah, that's the perfect word to describe him. He is a crispy CS player. Crispy bacon. <laughs> okay. It's my favorite. <laughs> yep. Just, I guess okay, that works as well. It. Yep, gone. Okay. It is crispy. But now, in a one versus five with the PT50, I think it's just a matter of waiting this out. So is there anything uh, you need to announce? Any public service announcements during this time, Henry? Uh, nothing I'd like to make public. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there is something going on. There is on. always something going on, but nothing I'll make public. Well, I can make public that we will have a pause. This time I assume technical it's called by Hiko again. They just previously called it tactical. Yeah. Well, I think they have one remaining after this. This is So maybe, okay, so yeah, it could be. I, I, I thought they were out for some reason, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, they, they, they've got money to buy here. It's just not a great amount of money, so you'd, it makes sense. Nico, of course, he's against Nico Frags here, but it's this third headshot. That's what got me going. Like, this was cool. This boom. So fast, so snappy. That's why he is considered one of the best and most talented mechanical players in the world. So, so good. We saw on DreamHack as well. He got the top stats for that event in Vegas. And, uh, and they also had Speedy, who was the lowest the stats. So that, just, that just kind of summarizes his time in that team, right? It certainly kind of, does. That's, but um, anyway, 14-12. Like we said, this is a tactical pause for Optic. They have still have one remaining to be fair. I thought that was, this would be their last one. Um, so in terms of the buy, it's not looking too rosy for them. Three M4s, a Famous, a UMP, and FaZe now in a fairly comfortable position. They were down 10-5 at one point. But... Uh, Oh, no, sorry, 9-6 after the first half. But uh, a very good first half from Optic, but haven't really converted in a second. Carrigan kind of flashing towards outside once again, sending his teammates up towards Popdog potentially. And so going for something quite fast. This is a set piece from the pause. Rain's already inside of the site. Sandwich smoke off. It's going to continue beyond that. It's going to go all the way around to hell. Naf's just left the lane at third. Nice spot from Rain. Good eyes to see Rush. I could barely see it. And I have X-Ray. And he hits him inside of control. It's Keo that would capitalize on Tarek. FaZe might find themselves on round, round 15 and map point. In quick succession. As it's going to be Naf to try and re-enter. Can't decide where to shoot. If he take it a step further, easily had a kill to his right at Hitch. But now it's just Eco remaining as Naf goes down. 
And Optic started this oh so well, but they come up oh so flat, and now it's map point for FaZe. It's looking promising at one point, right? And now we go to three match points for FaZe. They've got all the money in the world, and Optic are left looking at sixes and sevens. They're going to have to bring out the old Nova. Very rare. We see that these days, but it's in the hands of Hiko. Well, Malk's cat is named Crispy Bacon, by the way. So there Who's? you go. Malk from, from Dota. Oh, cool. Jacob. He's also involved with uh, the North Association. There you go. Yeah. So don't ever doubt Crispy Bacon. I did him for a second. Nico, though, I do doubt this with the Nova. Uh, it's very rare to see this weapon. He's always a bit desperate. He's got the green one, optic colors. Hopefully he'll bring us some good luck here. It's Carrigan. He's by himself. Oh, he's not by himself. This is okay. I was about to criticize him. I take it back. He's got Nico with him. It's all fine. So the refrag might come in. Match to get one. Doesn't even get that. Carrigan takes him down. One step closer to match victory, yeah. The edge. And I'm about to break. Lincoln Park making a comeback. It's, they're just that, like that eternal line, right? Yeah. If they've done well, they've created one of those immortalized sayings. Speaking of immortals, they're not in this game, but Mixwell certainly is. He's wrapped around the corner to find rain. Kiyoshima gets one back, but hello on the doorstep. Don't touch the farmer's daughter. Hiko will protect her every time. He's got the shotgun at the ready. You're <laughs> Nico. ridiculous. <laughs> Nico starts to head toward the site. Found by Tarek. I have to say a lovely headshot for the range, but it's Kerrigan taking down Rush. Trade one for one. There's guns in play because Hiko still has the M4 to work with. Flash off means Tarek down. Nico better have the M4 to work with. Tags up. Kerrigan's low, but he doesn't want to overcommit to the angle because as soon as he's on the bomb train, he's vulnerable to a secondary peak. Alu's going to find the angle anyway, and FaZe will take it 16 to 12. Great game of Canistra. We've been a little bit lucky here today. Marik had two fantastic games so far, but uh, FaZe, they do walk away a bit. Certainly the favorites going into this one. Optically, a very good fight, I have to say. That T-side impressed me, but... Even with a good performance from Hiko, it's not quite enough. A lot of clutches going in phase Clan's favor. They lost both pistols as well, but they managed to pick up the second round twice. So, very good stuff. Very good game of CS overall. I felt a bit bad for Optic, but phase they go 4-0 now. They're looking fantastic. I have to say, it's been an up day for them. They've definitely looked very good with Nico on board. This will motivate them all. They want wins, and they're in a good position. 4-0. We'll join the desk. We'll be back shortly.